All right, everybody. All right, Zane from Really Easy AI, and it is time for another new series. I don't know if it'll be a series. Uh, I'm sure it'll be at least two episodes, if not more. Uh, but how to really use Grammarly. So um, I will say from the outset, this is probably the first product that I reviewed that I didn't automatically set up to cancel. I'm going to be keeping this one for a while. I think the product is that good. And so I'm anxious to show it to you. All right, let's jump into it. Um, so what is Grammarly? Let's start with what the heck is Grammarly. I'm sure many of you may have heard about it, but it may not have absolute clarity on what it is. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, from their own website, it's responsible AI that ensures your writing and reputation shine, right? Work with an AI writing partner that helps you find the words you need to write that tricky email to get your point across, to keep your work moving. Basically, it's like having a super awesome spelling and grammar check as well as you know additional elements that are just constantly checking your work as you go along. Um, so like word spelling and grammar check on steroids. It's pretty cool. Uh, what's the return on investment on better writing? Well, for organizations, uh, they've done some studies and they found they get a 17x. That means 17 times uh, production, uh, productivity out of it. Organizations that deploy Grammarly save an average of $5,000 per employee per year. Uh, data stays private, productivity rises, inbox numbers drop, and teams can focus on what they should do, not on how they should say it. Yeah, absolutely. It basically is writing for you in a lot of respects or making damn sure your writing is good. Um, so... Now, in addition to that, there's been some interesting things going on. And one of the interesting things that has happened uh, is the CEO of Grammarly um, uh, actually wrote an article, Ushering in the Future of Communication in the Era of AI. And he said, and I'll just read the first couple of paragraphs here. I'm the CEO of a company that has been growing profitable for 15 years, trusted by over 30 million customers and 70,000 teams. Yet speculating about Grammarly's demise has become a favorite pastime for some. To paraphrase Mark Twain, recent reports of our death have been greatly exaggerated. Despite speculation about perceived threats uh, from companies like Apple, Microsoft, and OpenAI and a new crop of rip Grammarly headlines, I'm, I'm entering the chat to say we're here and we're thriving. Now, he wrote that on June 16, 2024. It is July 26, 2024, and I'm here to tell you that's true. Grammarly is a very specific, very niche product that um, is very good. Uh, so, uh, you know, why Grammarly, he goes on to explain why Grammarly, you should use it and so on and so forth. Yeah, we're going to see that for ourselves. That's why I'm here. But I wanted you to to hear it straight from uh, the CEO. This guy's pretty cool. R Raul Roy Chowdhury. Uh, he's the CEO and he seems to have a good head on his shoulders, at least for this article. Uh, so uh, with that said, I guess I need to show you the actual Grammarly website, which is Grammarly.com. And actually it took me to app.grammarly.com because I've already signed up. So let me do an incognito window and take you there fresh. So you guys can see it. So it's pretty straightforward. The stuff that I was just talking about is here. Responsible AI. Uh, you can sign up. It's free or with Google. We'll get to that in a minute. Lots and lots of people are using it. Lots and lots of people. Um, better writing, better results. I'm going to take you through all of that. So Grammarly.com. By the way, you can download my slides. Uh, I'll include a link to my GitHub where you can get my slides. And every time I show you something that is from their website or from wherever, that's all these slides right here, all these initial slides anyway, uh, in the notes for that slide, I will have a link so you can go to each one of these places and see it for yourself. I, I don't, um, I always include references. Okay, so let's talk about features and capabilities of Grammarly versus ChatGPT. I found this old style HTML table, I think it was in his blog post, kind of interesting, but I think it, it really does highlight some things you're going to see for yourself. Hmm. Hang on, how to get a sip of Youngling Beer. For those who don't know, Youngling Beer is the unofficial sponsor of all my uh, sessions. So what do you get with Grammarly? Real-time writing support. Yep, 100%. That's the main reason you want it. 
Um, you don't get that with ChatGPT. Generative AI, you get it with Grammarly or ChatGPT. Sentence and paragraph rewrites, you can get that with ChatGPT, but you have to feed it to. You don't get it in real time. Real time is really the thing. Um, proactive suggestions, right, instead of reactive. So, yeah, that, that's true. Uh, tone detection and adjustments, yes, that's pretty awesome. Strategic suggestions, yes. Integrations, yes, there's a crap ton of those. And plagiarism detection. Not a big deal for me, but I know for some of you it might be a big deal, particularly for school folks. So yeah, huge deal. I, I am I am here to tell you, you know, if you've watched most of my stuff, you know what I call bullshit. That's not bullshit. This is a really, really good product. All right. But uh, uh, like all good products, it ain't free. So let's talk about what it costs. So pricing uh, comes in multiple tiers, free all the way up to enterprise. Free is exactly what it sounds like, $0.00. It lets you write, but it limits the crap out of you quite a bit. Um, <coughs> I actually have the free account set up here. Let me go to Grammarly, and it'll take me to my Grammarly, and then let me go to my document here so you can kind of see. So it's, I'll get to this later on, but you can see here premium suggestions, 12. So the free account does give you some things, mostly misspellings, correcting misspellings, and things of that nature. But it doesn't give you everything. Um, and trust me, you're going to want everything. So I can do, you know, some of the some of this stuff, some clarity stuff, uh, and so on and so forth. But that's pretty much where it ends. It doesn't do engagement. It doesn't do delivery. You're going to want all of this. So we'll get to that later on. But understand that the free level is fine if you want kind of want to get your free feet wet. But you will very quickly become frustrated with the free level and most likely we want to upgrade to premium pretty quick. I would recommend it. Uh, I'm doing monthly right now, but I'm going to go ahead and shift over to yearly because I've, I've decided I'm, I'm going to keep it around. It's that helpful to me. Uh, so that's that's what I'm going to be doing. You decide. Uh, it's $12 a month billed annually, but it's like in nutty high. It's like $15 a month, I think, billed uh, monthly. I, I'll have to double check. I'll show it to you when I get to the, my premium account. Uh, but at any rate, free gives you writing without mistakes, set your writing tone, generate text with 100 AI prompts. Premium gets you everything included in free, plus adjust your tone, rewrite full sentences, write fluently in English, uh, catch accidental plagiarism, generate text with 1,000 AI prompts, and all application actions, which we will see. Um, business does that, plus it's for teams, by the way. Te business is for teams. I think it's a minimum of three people on the team. Centralized billing style guide, all kinds of good stuff for teams. And then, of course, you have the inevitable <coughs> enterprise call for price. So if you have to ask, you probably can't afford it. All right, so let's dig into feature sets. What do you really get at each of those levels? Well, here's a nice little table. And I'm only going to do free, free through uh, business. Actually, the only thing I'm focused on is premium. I'm not really doing free except in the initial phases. Uh, I'm going to jump right into premium so we get everything. And you can see right away, you know, right without mistakes, these all have little information icons. Let me show you the website here that kind of lays these uh, features out. So that's actually, whoop, oh, no, I don't have it. Uh, it must be on the main website then. I think it is when you compare plans. So let me see here. Um, all right, look, look, let's just do it. Let's just head on over to Grammarly. Okay. And on the main website, I believe it has a compare plans when I go to pricing. Yeah, here we go. Compare plans. So you see there's a little indicator here. Uh, it shows you what each of these are. So write without mistakes. Basically, fix your spelling errors, right? Set your writing tone. Uh, you can see here, uh, set your writing tone. You can set your tone to formal, friendly, optimistic. Uh, you can change your tone up. Very cool. Adjust it. Well, this is see your writing tone rather. This is see your writing tone, and then that's where it ends for the free plan. Now, at the premium, you can actually adjust your writing tone. So, right? You can adjust your writing tone. We'll see that. You can rewrite full sentences at this point, and I use this a whole lot now. I didn't realize how atrocious some of my sentence structure was till I got this, and I'm I'm just I'm loving this fe feature, uh, especially for clarity. Uh, write fluently in English. Again, if English is your second language, definitely very powerful. You get that with premium. 
use inclusive language. Not a big deal for me, but for some of you it might be a big deal. Um, keep your citations consistent. Yeah, you can choose your style. APA, Chicago style, whatever you want. Very, very cool. And it will do your citations and keep them consistent. Catch accidental plagiarism. Yep, it does that as well. And then, of course, you can generate stuff using Gen AI um, and complete workflows as well with, uh, from, with some various app actions. It integrates with a crap ton of apps. Um, just a nutty amount of apps. So there's a lot going on here. Um, all I'm concerned about for these sessions are the writing features. I'm not going to get into security or team or any of that stuff. I'll leave that to you if you want to go deeper and want to do more with it. But I want you to be aware that these things exist and we're going to be looking at all of that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Continuing on. So uh, we had already uh, compared the plans. Uh, I, just to briefly, the security features do exist. However, free and premium have the same level of security. It's not until you get to business and enterprise that you have much deeper security, mostly geared for teams. And then, of course, you have your team features, which only show up at business and enterprise level, where you can set things like style guides for the whole company, brand tones, knowledge sharing, all kinds of good stuff. Even an analytics dashboard to see how people are using Grammarly if you need to keep track of usage. Okay, let's talk about signing up. So signing up's real easy. I showed it to you before. You can either you know uh, sign up with your Google account or sign up with your email. Uh, you can see here it says work or school email, but I tested that. You can sign up with any email. I don't know why it says work or school email. Any email will do. Uh, and once you sign up, of course, sign up with Google, Facebook, Apple, or any email, uh, you'll go through uh, the sign up process. Now, be aware, as I mentioned before, if you decide you want to go the business route, Grammarly for Business, um, it does require a minimum of three members. And that may be perfect for your organization. So go nuts if that's what you want to do. Uh, I think it's fine. If you've got a team and you're willing to pay that, uh, go for it. I'm just by myself here. Let's see. Did I just double up on the same slide? Oh, no. I wanted to just uh, show you the distinction between the annual pricing and the monthly pricing. See here, annual pricing is $45 a month. But monthly pricing is $75 a month. I mean, so they really, really, really want you to go annual pricing. I mean, they really want you to do it. Okay, uh, this is a great time to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done it. We'd love to, every little bit helps the algorithm and gets the word out to other users so they can consume this content. I really would appreciate it if you uh, would take a second to do that for me. Um, and if you really, really like my content, consider becoming a member. We have two levels of membership, Artificial Narrow Intelligence, level one, $1.99 a month. You get loyalty badges, emojis, discounted merchandise. I got I to gotta get more merch. All, right now, all I have is a koozie. Um, uh, and, though, at, at this level, uh, you also get access to my new enterprise track, which is for members only. At the enterprise track, we're looking at things like uh, Google Vertex, um, uh, Amazon SageMaker, uh, Azure, OpenAI in Azure, enterprise-level stuff, right? So if you're into enterprise stuff, Consider becoming a member. You can get access to it as low as level one. And if you really dig on my content and like what I do, because uh, you can go to level two, artificial general intelligence, $4.99 a month. We get some stuff for priority reply to comments. I reply to all comments anyway. Members only polls, member shout outs. I do those occasionally, very rarely. Photo and status updates, even more rare. The main reason most people join level two is because I queue up my content. Even this content will get queued up, although I, I got a little behind because we had the hurricane and I've been sick. Um, today is July 26th, and I think you guys will see this probably in a few days. But um, most of my level two folks, they want the content as soon as I make it. They don't want to wait. And so that's generally why you become a level two member. So we'd love to have you. Uh, please welcome, come on board. Uh, it'd be great to have you hanging out with us. All right, so let's talk about install options. So once you've signed up, um, you're going to be given a lot of install options, a lot of places you can install. Uh, and, and man, oh man, is there a lot of places you can install. 100%, you absolutely positively want to install the desktop version of Grammarly, either for Windows or for Mac. I was a little unsure at first, 
uh, but then I installed it and I'm never looking back, okay? Because the Windows version will pop up and help you in places you wouldn't expect it. So for example, uh, let's see, which account is this? Yeah, if I go to ChatGPT, you see here, this is my Grammarly for Windows kicking in here. Uh, I don't think it's the, uh, well, actually, let me let me disable this. I should be able to turn this off, and I think my Grammarly is for window, Windows will kick in anyway. Let me see here. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, maybe not. Okay, well, then uh, I lied. I guess we have to have uh, Grammarly for Windows. So let me go ahead and turn that on and pin it down. Okay, we're good. But uh, you'll get it all over the place, and it, it, sometimes it'll be a combination of things. The nice thing about it is you can you can click it and move it around sometimes. So get citation button for your chat GPT. You know, you can, you, there's all kinds of cool stuff like get citation we'll look at later on. But see here, as I, as I typed, it's automatically giving me suggestions. And I can put my mouse over it and say, yeah, let's correct that. So very, very cool. Uh, we've got the extension. Let's take a look at some of the other places we can install it. So Grammarly for Windows, though, will show up in other areas as you're using different things. Um, in some cases, if you don't have the extension, it will show up and, and uh, take the, you know, show up in place of the extension. Obviously, if you're doing a lot of browser stuff, having the Grammarly extension is a good idea. So let's talk about the extension. What browsers does it work in? Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and Safari. So yeah, absolutely get the extension as well. It will make your life a whole lot better. So uh, install it on your desktop, install it in whatever browsers you use, and once you do that, it starts showing up. So Grammarly for Windows is gonna show up in all these places, Word, Outlook, PowerPoint, all that stuff. And then the extension is used for Gmail and other Google type applications. And I'm going to show you all of that in time uh, so we can see it all. But I want you to be aware there's just a ton of places this thing can be used. Uh, it even shows up in places I wouldn't expect in programs that aren't listed here. It just recognizes when I'm writing something and, and takes over. All right, so uh, you even have it for mobile, iPhone, iPad, and Android. Yep, you can get it for mobile. I haven't installed it on mobile yet, but I'm going to. I absolutely want it. Uh, I think it'll be very helpful. So you can do that as well. And I think that's it. I mean, all kinds of places. Uh, one place that really surprised me was on uh, Twitter, um, or X now, and, and some of those places. That, that was very surprising to me. Very, very surprising to me. Uh, so I like that. Oh, you know what? Real quick. Let me show you where uh, Windows, the Windows version would kick in. Let me, um, I was I was dealing with um, my resume the other day. And uh, I had my Grammarly for Windows going. Yeah, here it is. Let's see if I can bring it over so you guys can see it. I want you to see this. So this is a great example of where it kind of, I, I, I knew I had installed it, but had forgotten I had it. You can't really see it there. I'm going to have to bring this in a little more, aren't I? Uh, it's on the edge. There's actually a number four. Here we go. Let me bring it in. There you go. You see this? So I can click it and drag it around. There's actually a couple of places I can see these dots showing up. I can drag it around to different places, which is seriously cool. Um, so it's telling me it's, it's found four issues with this. Now, I'm still using the free version. So uh, it's probably not gonna let me do everything. Actually, yeah, this is still the free version. So you see here, it's got the little diamond. That means that I need the premium version and I have bought the premium version. I just haven't signed in with it yet because I wanted you guys to see what the free version is like. When I tell you you're gonna get frustrated real quick, I mean it because you're gonna see all this stuff that it wants to change that actually makes sense as you're looking at it. Um, and you're like, oh my God, I, I really want that. So uh, that, that's why they're really good at upselling. And I gotta tell you, the product's so damn good, I don't mind. Um, but there you go. So you, you're gonna get some really cool stuff like that. But that, that kind of caught me off guard when I first noticed it. I was like, whoa, yeah, damn, it's gonna help me with my, you know, my resume. All right, there you go. Okay. Um, all right, so let's move on. And moving on. Personalizing the experience. So let's talk about personalizing the experience. So when you first log in, um, it's going to take you through a, uh, a kind of a, a wizard, if you will, 
uh, personalization experience and have you pick some things. Let's do a quick demo of that so I can show you what that looks like. And so here I'm at Grammarly and it says personalize your experience. Uh, has my name, hello, really AI consulting. Start by telling us about your writing needs. So most of my writing is for, and then you pick what you're gonna do. Is it mostly for school? Is it mostly for work? Mostly for other projects? Really depends. Most everything I'm gonna do is for work, so I'm gonna pick work. And then don't worry, you can change this later on if you need to. So I'll click on next, it says great, tell us about your team. My primary function is, whatever it is you do, I'm gonna say that I am, let's see, community and social services, consulting, I guess information technology, maybe research or sciences, yeah, or other. Um, any of those are appropriate, whatever's appropriate for you. In my case, I'll do uh, IT. My company size is, well, just me for now. Although if you pick larger company sizes, then you select role, right? So then, you know, my role is team member, manager, director, CEO, or owner. So if it's just you, it just kind of assumes you do it all. So you can do all that. I'm going to click on next. Great. What do you want help with? Mistake-free writing, compelling vocabulary, tone and formality. Definitely mistake-free writing. Compelling vocabulary. Yes, I'm very big on vocabulary. Tone and formality. Not so much. Quickly rewriting my text, sure. Generating a first draft, absolutely. I suffer from the blank page problem. Feeling confident, don't worry about it. Sounding fluent in English, I think I'm okay there. Generating citations, yep. Improving readability, absolutely. Improving writing quality, yes. Plagiarism detection, not so much for me. Brainstorming ideas or creating an outline, again, not so much. Um, that should do it. And again, you can change this is just kind of for them to get an idea of what you're trying to use this thing for. Next is tell us about your experience with generative AI. I've never used it. I've tried ChatGPT. I regularly use generative AI. Well, for me, of course, I regularly use generative AI, but I'll tell you what, I'll choose the middle ground for now. Um, and then I write in the following apps and websites. So this last one's going to determine what apps it serves up for you or suggests that you install. So I definitely use Outlook, Gmail, Google Docs, Word, uh, PowerPoint, Slack, uh, not so much Teams, Google Sheets, and on. So it, you select everything that applies to you uh, here because it's going to suggest, though, that you install these applications or do whatever is appropriate to use uh, Grammarly in these applications. One of the, and as we said earlier, one of the biggest strengths it has is just the sheer number of apps that it works in. So I'm gonna click on next. All right, so uh, I have a free account right now, so it dumps me to the uh, free continue to Grammarly or level up. I will level up later on, I just wanna to continue to Grammarly for now. And now it wants me to install Grammarly for Windows plus Chrome which uh, you, know, you can do, it's a combination that installs, it. it's actually two different things. It's Grammarly for Chrome and Grammarly for Windows. So you can do that, um, or you can you know, obviously see where Grammarly works. It's, it's just trying to make sure you get all the proper stuff uh, installed. So in this case, I'll just do, um, I think I'll scroll down and just get the Grammarly browser extension for now. I'll add it to Chrome. And we're in business. Excellent. So I can manage my extension from there. I do want to go, you do want to go to Manage Extensions right away if you're in Chrome. Pin that extension so you can see it. <coughs> and you should be good. Now, um, it will walk you through. And, and they're really good about giving you a lot of cool stuff that you can do. Once you've done that, it will walk you through the Grammarly for Chrome install here it's to say it's now active the grammarly logo means grammarly is checking your writing so there we see that it says pin grammarly to your browser for quick access that's what we just did in your manage make sure to pin it so you can see it here um, and it lets you know it has access to the site i'll click on continue and then all set look for this in your other things that we indicated we use that's fine and then up into the right it says my grammarly just click on that and that will take you to the My Grammarly interface. Now, next thing we're gonna talk about then is going through the uh, getting started checklist, which we kind of already done. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, let's just jump right into it. 
So the getting started checklist is pretty uh, easy, pretty straightforward animal. It says take a quick tour, want to see how Grammarly works, start the tour. Again, the onboarding process is pretty powerful. So I'm going to click on start tour. It says great, Grammarly works where you do. The Grammarly logo means it's checking your writing, great. Um, uh, uh, let's see here. It says review and accept suggestions. Hover on uh, underlines to see Grammarly suggestions. So what it'll do is it'll underline things. And when you see an underline, if you hover over it, you'll see the suggestion right there. It's pretty powerful stuff. Click the Grammarly logo to go deeper if you want to. The Grammarly logo will give you more detail about what you're doing. If you want to do more than just hover, very nice. We're going to see all this in action, by the way. Uh, pin Grammarly to your browser. We've already done that. And that should do it for that piece. Should take us back. Welcome to the Grammarly editor. Now, uh, it's kind of bouncing around a little bit, but we're going to go through this part because that's the next feature. Right? Once, you, once you got it installed, you do have this special place on, the, on my Grammarly, which is where we're at, app.grammarly.com. It's actually my Grammarly, um, called the editor, where you can upload documents to it and see all this stuff in action. Uh, I do recommend you go through it because I think the tutorial is pretty powerful, but we're going to go through it together so you can see what's going on. So it says, welcome to the Grammarly editor. Use it to create and upload documents and edit them with Grammarly's writing assistance. Now, do you have to do that? No, no, absolutely not. It will work in your applications with you, but if you so desire, you can upload them to this special place and modify them here as well. All right, so I'm going to click on continue. It says, great, now it begins taking us, uh, first things first, it, it advertises the Gen AI piece. Go beyond revision. Gen AI can help you brainstorm and do all that. Uh, we, can, um, we can go ahead and come back to that later on, uh, or we can go through it now. I think we'll come back to it because uh, I'm really not interested in the Gen AI piece just yet. Uh, but it says, review suggestions. Grammarly checks for mistakes and suggests ways to improve your text. That's fine. Uh, set some goals. We can do that. Specify writing style and audience. Yep, we can do that. We will look at that. Evaluate your text. We'll look at that as well. And adjust settings. We're going to be looking at all of that um, and give your document a name. So we're going to uh, we're going to pause here. Um, and then when we come back, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all of these elements uh, of the My Grammarly document er edit area that we can take advantage of. Okay, folks, it's been about 30 minutes and I want to keep these relatively short. So this is a good place to stop. We've gotten through the getting started, kind of the initial parts of the onboarding process. We'll finish out the onboarding process and we're going to jump into understanding the editor as well. So we're going to do a few things uh, at the next session. So we'll stop here. Hopefully you've managed to get onboarded between now and the time you come to the next session. Take a minute. If you're going to, go ahead and sign up for Grammarly, get it installed, and then you can kind of run along with me as we do these things. All right, everybody. This is Zane. I'll see you next time.